learn a trade. Good evening, good evening, good evening all. Can you believe it? We are in November. It's almost the end of the year. And I'm so glad to see all of you here. I'm going to encourage you as I do each month to look around the Zoom room. And if you don't see a friend, use this time to call them, send them a WhatsApp and let them know that it's going down. We are about to begin this month's session of the Distinguished Alumni Speaker Series. As always, we give you an opportunity to provide your feedback and your comments, and most of all, to give any questions or ask any questions that you may have after our speaker for this evening would have made his presentation. I know that we would totally enjoy ourselves. And without further ado, I would like to invite Ms. Zendra Neely with our welcome. Good evening. I am Zendra Neely. And I am once again here to welcome you to this exciting alumni speaker series. Tonight's session is the final session for the year 2022. Oh, how you will, we all will be missed, but I am grateful and thanking you for once again for signing in. The night speaker is an alumni and a veteran, an educator with an exciting story to tell. We know that you will learn a lot from him as he recounts his journey from student to the head of department. Oh, how dreams become a reality. We invite you to participate by placing your questions and your comments. And please do reach out to us by the alumni at btvi.edu.bs to tell us what you would like to see and coming within the following year, 2023. So I invite you to sit back relax and enjoy the session. Once again, you are truly welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, it is always a pleasure to see all of you. And of course, it is always a pleasure when we have our leadership with us. And so I would like to take this opportunity to recognize our interim president, Dr. Linda Davis, who is with us, and she's always with us. So Dr. Davis, we thank you so much. I also see AVP with responsibility for Grand Bahama, Veronica Cawley, who is also with us. And, you know, I would like to give Dr. Davis an opportunity to say a few words to us and then immediately following given that this is the last session for the year, I would also extend the same courtesy to AVP Colley. So Dr. Davis. Thank you so much, uh, AVP. Tom said I couldn't miss this one. Um, I'm gonna hold um, 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 HOD Roker's feet to the fire. I expect nothing less. Uh, welcome one, welcome all. And thank you so much for putting on this series, AVP Thompson. Good evening all. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, Good evening, Mrs. Thompson. Thank you for dropping that one on me. It's great to be here. Always, I'm always here. And of course, Mr. Roker is with us, one of our representatives at the Grand Bahama office, and we are glad to be a part of what's going on. Thank you, all of you alumni, all of you who are there. It's great to have you a part of what is going on at BTVI. Great job. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. And without further ado, I will now invite Mrs. Jeda Says to introduce the speaker for this evening. Good evening to all. My name is Jeda Says and I am the secretary of the Alumni Association. As Zentra Neely mentioned earlier, she said that this is the final session of this year and what a way for me to end this year by introducing our guest speaker, Kenton Roker. 
a caring, enthusiastic teacher with a strong commitment to student development and the learning experience. Kenton Roker is chair of construction and mechanical trades at the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute. Mr. Roker attended BDBI, then known as the Industrial Training Center, graduating with a certificate in automotive technology back in 1992. He has since distinguished himself in his field. Excellent at his trade, Mr. Roker was an automotive teacher at St. George's High School between 2010 and 2012. Meanwhile, he has served at BDBI for the past 18 years, teaching, teaching this very same trade to many men and women in their intricacies of auto mechanics. With such expertise, Mr. Roker is also owner of Roker's, Roker's Autos, one of Grand Bahamas most respective automotive Centers and has been a member of the International Automotive Technician Network for the past 30 years. In the interim, this man of God who has attended the Hawksville Church of God for many years remains faithful to the Almighty. He is currently assistant pastor. In his spare time, Mr. Roker is a lover of cycling. In fact, he is a professional cyclist and has won several awards, including the Kongman, Trafalton in which he represented BDBI in 2016. He is the reigning Elite Masters Champion 2021-2022. Presently, Mr. Roker serves as Vice President of the Bahamas Cycling Federation and President of the Grand Bahamas Cycling Club. This husband and father, he has a heart of gold. After Hurricane Dorian devastated Grand Bahama back in 2019, wrecking havoc on the lives of many, he sprung into action and became a helper, putting his hands forward to become fully involved with World Food Kitchen, distributing cooking meals to people in the eastern end of the island, as well as BTVI and Northern Campus workers as well. A believer in lifelong learning, Mr. Roker is currently enrolled in the York St. John's University and Robert Kennedy College out of Switzerland, where he is pursuing an MBA in leadership and management. Mr. Roker's life is beyond him. It's about service to God and to the people around him. Tonight, our speaker for the alumni series, Mr. Kenton Roker. Pleasant good evening and thank you very much for such kind words. And I will thank um, David B. Thompson for the opportunity for me to share the road I traveled leading up to this night. I want to thank um, our interim president, Dr. Linda Davis, for her support, as well as AVP Colley for the playing a, spe a special role on, in my life. Also in the meeting, I have my mom, who's here, who's tuned in. And thank her, and I'll mention her as we go along in my um, presentation. It all began as a young man, in Nassau, living in Yellow Weather Gardens. My brother Thaddeus Roker was an automotive technician, one who specialized in hot rods. That was his love. Um, being his helper with him, you know, I, I fell in love with the trade, working along with him as he was a mechanic for a truck of gas. Every day I jumped in the truck and I rode along with him where we deliver gas. And um, also we work on vehicles after work. You know, and I'm moving right along. I um, I realized that I love the trade, but at that time I did not make a special effort to go into the trade. In 1991, I received a phone call from the then coordinator for the Industrial Training Center asking me if I wanted to learn a trade. And I asked what was being offered. And the first thing they mentioned was auto mechanics. I didn't, I didn't allow them to say anything else. That was the one I wanted. And they said, auto mechanics, I said, I'll do it. At that time, the government would give you a stipend to attend school. And um, you know, it wasn't much. Stipend was only $25 a week. 
but they said that stipend was for transportation to get you to and from the campus. And the thing about it was at that time, I didn't have a vehicle. I walked from Seahorse Village to BTVI, have a BTVI back to Seahorse Village uh, because I was determined to learn this trade and to do my best. And then my instructor back then was Mr. Vincent Knowles. He was the automotive technician for Avis rent a car. And in the evening, he taught the automotive class at the campus. The campus is not, was not how it is now, where we have an automotive lab in the back. Those labs weren't there. It was just the main building. And so I was determined to attend class. And could you imagine class coming out at 10 at night? And I didn't hang around looking for a ride. I knew I had to get home. And so I walked from BTBI to Seahorse Village every night unless someone stopped and asked me for a ride. Being a, an independent person, um, not, having, not relying on persons or finding an excuse and I would say, I, I, I got that trait from my mom. You know, if you want something, you go for it. Don't rely on persons to spoon feed you. You go ahead and you set your goals and you accomplish them. And at that time, I was, a, I was an adult, a young man. And persons would ask, well, why you choose to go to school that kind of time in your life? Well, when I was in high school, my mom sent me to live with one of our friends while she went away to university. And I hope you understand what I'm saying. My mom went to university when I was a young man. Um, and um, she set that example where age, like Ronnie Butler said, age is nothing but a number. You know, uh, and she attended the University of St. Ben's and John's in, in Minnesota. And when she finished that, she came home and I remember going to, I think it's the University of Florida while I was in high school. And so you'll find that I was what one would call a, a late bloomer. I was her most troublesome child. Um, but you would say like the prodigal son, when he came to his senses, he realized that there was a road that he ought to travel and he went back home. But I came to my sense and I realized that I must set a path for myself. And that is what I did. I attended the industrial training center, graduated at the top of the class. And um, my weakest subject was math, but I found that I fell in love with math at BTBI. And I think that was partly due to the instructor, Mr. Ingram, who's still teaching math at BTBI. He was my math instructor back then. And the way he, he taught math, he made me fall in love with it. And um, I, I'm glad, I'm, great, I'm grateful for the way um, he presented it. And um, because in the automotive industry, Math is very, very important. A lot of calculations are involved, especially when you're talking about the new vehicles today that have um, onboard computers. And, and so you must be able to, to read the PIDs, which is the data from each module. And you must be able to convert those so you can understand exactly what is giving you the right values and what is not giving you the right values. And so with Mr. Ingram's help, I'm able to do that up to the day because of the way he, he presented math. When I graduated from BTBI in 1992 at the Industrial Center in 1992, I was still working as a lab technician at the Community Animal Hospital. And I decided if I wanted to get the most out of what I've learned, I needed to leave that animal hospital and um, venture into the automotive repair um, industry. 
I was making a decent salary at, at the animal hospital. And so I decided to leave. I left making a decent salary to settle for, I was only as an entry level, all of my fitness, I was making $150 a week. But I knew that if I persevere, if I don't look at what I'm receiving then, but look at what, can, what I would, would be able to receive later. And that's what encouraged me because the, the young man, the, the gentleman who I was working with, Mr. Clyde Eiffel, he himself was a teacher, not in the technical school, but as a young man coming onto him, he, he decided to pour what he knew into me. And um, with the knowledge that he had and from coming from working in a General Motors factory in the United States, he taught me basically everything he knew. Well, the day he's passed, it's been a year now since he's passed, but I, I, I thank him for his contribution um, into my life. It was tough walking away every week uh, with $150, but I worked with Clyde Eiffel for one year. And within that year, what I learned from him, I was amazed when I looked back at it because I started there at the entry level. And when I left there, the knowledge that I had, I was able to work on my own. But what happened was my brother and his business partner moved to Grand Bahama and they opened a, a garage, JNT Auto. And so I decided to go and work with my brother. Um, I didn't realize my ability until I went with them. They had specialized in transmissions and engines, the mechanical side of it. I was focused more on the diagnostic and electrical. So here it is now, I'm at a garage where I'm the only one who did the electrical and the diagnosis. And I realized that when I was faced with these vehicles, everything Mr. Eiffel taught me started to come back to my remembrance. And I was able to apply those uh, I, I wasn't able to go out to the United States to further uh, my career. And so what I did, whenever they had new videos, there were VHS videos back then, I bought the videos. You know, I, I did correspondence classes because I wanted to be a, the best at what I, what I was doing. And the day I still have those materials, those correspondence notes and those VHS videos, and I, I studied and whenever the time came, if there was a, a weekend seminar in Miami, because I couldn't go away to, to college, I did those two-day seminars and the day up to the day, I still attend those two-day seminars. And that propelled me and that opened my eyes. And um, it really caused me to, to focus more on the diagnostic and electrical. Now, the reason why I focus on that area because I found a lot of mechanics or technicians were shying away from that area. So I said, if I make that my specialty, I'll be able to make more money because everyone was into the mechanical repairs and they were shying away from the electrical and the diagnostic side of it. And so I studied, I researched, I joined the International Automotive Technicians Network um, they held convention. They had conventions every two years. I attended conventions in California, in Detroit, um, all over the U.S., where I networked with more than sixty thousand technicians from around the world. This opened my eyes to the industry. Um, today, I still network with those individuals, whereas we have a, a, a group where if I'm faced or challenged with with a vehicle, I can go in that group after doing my research on the vehicle and put all my information in there and then we'll discuss it. Uh, we'll break it down, discuss it, and then we'll, we'll fix that vehicle online before I go back to the vehicle. And I found there's power in networking. And so this is what we, we do up to this day. Um, IATN, the International Automotive Technicians Network, is a viable tool in the industry. And I know I encourage uh, technicians to join it. It's free of charge, where you can network from persons from around the world. Let me show you how important networking is. I had a vehicle that was a Japanese made and I couldn't find brake parts for it. 
in the United States because there's no listing, couldn't find in the Bahamas. Because of IATN, I networked with a gentleman named Daniel Irie in Japan. And I told him what I needed. The, the, the brake parts in Japan was $2.50. They cost more to ship it than what the brake parts cost. And he was able to send those, those to me. The, the thing about it is in Japan, they're not allowed to accept monies from anyone outside of Japan. And so in return, what we would do, if he wanted a piece of tool, I'd purchase a tool and have the tool shipped to him. That was his payment. And so that shows you the power in, in, net, in networking. A few years after that, I received a phone call from the coordinator of BTBI. They needed an instructor because the, the then instructor had left to go to the United States. And so I decided, I said, well, I'll hold on to it until you can find someone else. And that's why I spoke with Mr. Samuel Rigby. And so I went in, met with him, and I started working for BTBI from then, not knowing that this instructor left us also teaching at St. George's. And so St. George's called me, they needed someone to sit in until they could have um, get a new instructor. And so here it is in, in less than a week, I was teaching at St. George's and at BTBI. I St. George's during the day and BTBI in the night. And I still had my, my garage to run. And so what the principal of St. George's did was allow me to teach the theory at the school, but gave me the school bus to carry the students to my shop to do the practical. And so here I was being able to get my work done at the shop, teach at St. George's, and also teach at BTVI. And so he taught me three jobs, you know, within a day. And so it worked out pretty good. But I also found that, that teaching in the high school, I didn't like it too much. Um, and so once I found an instructor for the high school, I, I left, but I stuck with BTVI because I, I, I fell in love with the environment. The environment in the, in the technical school, BTBI, was a lot different from, from the high school. And then came along the apprenticeship program for the Grand Mama Shipyard. And so I taught that mechanical engineering for the Grand Mama Shipyard during all of the apprenticeship programs. And I, I mean, it, it really um, um, fulfilling for me to be able to to teach, um, they're talking about teaching the um, city and guilds. And through all my studies, I was able to, to access all this information, whereas I was able to teach those for many years, the Grandma Mership Apprenticeship Program. From the start, I was involved with it. Also involved with um, the city and guilds with um, Freeport Container Port. I mean, I have a love for, for teaching. Uh, I, I teach Sunday school, I teach Bible study. Uh, you can say, well, it, it runs the farm with my mom being a retired educator. Um, I have a sister who has a, a school right now. And then my older sister, she was actually, she did a presentation in, the, in this series before, who teaches cosmetology at the prison. So you'll find that um, it runs uh, within the family. And, and so, I can say the chip don't fall far from the but my mom set the example of how we should work, how you should live your life on a daily basis. Until I have a slogan on my invoice that says, if a man does his work to please the Lord, who is he that should complain? But that simply means that if I do my work to please the Lord, I did it to the best of my ability. I am one who believe in sharing because I don't want to take the knowledge to the grave. If I take it to the grave, there's no use to anyone. So my, my students can tell you, I pour everything I have into them. Because when they leave BTVI, they represent me. Uh, when they go there and they ask, well, who taught you all the mechanics? Say, my name is will be called. And so I make sure everything that I know 
I pour it into them. To ensure that when they go there, they can be successful. And it's not just about successful in the trade, but successful in life. I teach them life lessons, their moments in, in, in your classroom where you have a teachable moment. Okay, and I, I, I love when they're teachable moments and I find that the students tend to grasp a lot during those, um, during those times. The Lord has blessed me with the ability to read, um, with the ability to read facial expressions. Um, you may find I may be teaching a, a session and I may be repeating the same thing over and over and then I represent the exact same thing and differently because the expression on some of the students' faces is telling me they ain't get it yet. And, and hence you have the different learning styles. Uh, and so in, in my classroom, I incorporate all the learning styles to ensure that when every student grasps what is being taught. At the end of the day, I must have accomplished something. At the end of the day, I must look back and I must have learned something. And I, I, I found that we can learn from our students. Uh, it's not just you being the instructor, but also the students can teach you. And so I, I, I always keep that, that avenue open where my students have something to say, I listen, I make notes because I go back and I review everything that I taught and I review their responses. And being in education, you must, you must be able to, to, to understand that sometimes a student comes from a home where there are problems and their, and their body language or their, 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 or the way their attitude in the class can ref it, uh, it reflects what happened prior. And so you might say, well, why is a child so stubborn? Why is a child carrying on the way they're carrying on? Uh, I've learned that to get to the bottom of things. So after a class, I will turn around, I, can, I will speak to a student and get to the bottom of it, what's going on, why you carry on like, like such and such. See, one of the things you don't want to do is embarrass a child. And so I'll ensure that when that happens, it is never done in the front of other students, never done in the front of other students. And so we must be able to, to don't just take the job, okay, I'm just, I'm here to teach you this. If you get it, you get it. No, you have to become a part of that person's, that student's life, all right? And so it, it's more than just teaching because sometimes those students, for instance, we have students, um, I'll always remember there's a student who could not come to school in his uniform because of the neighborhood that he's living in, all right? If he put on a uniform, the gangs would, would, would go at him because they don't want him in school. They want him like them on the streets. And so the student would come and have his uniform at school, change into his uniform to come into the classroom and after a change to go back home. All right? But I had to walk a certain road because he couldn't go through a certain territory. And these are people, students we have faced with. All right? These are uh, 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 students we have faced with. So we as, as instructors, we must understand this and do what we can to get them out of that neighborhood. Some of them have nowhere to go. I was able to find homes for children, for, for, for students to get the, just to get them out of the neighborhood because going back in the neighborhood, the peer pressure sometimes is too much for them. It's just too much. And so having friends who had apartments or who might be living by themselves, I was able to find homes for them to go in. And this is the first time I'm really sharing this because I'm not doing it to be seen. As an instructor, my job is not just to teach the trade, but to ensure that that student has a balanced life. All right. I know what it is to have to, to take my student to buy breakfast. Why? Because they came from a home where there is no food, but they were determined to, to make it. And so we have to look at, 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 at this and ensure that as we teach our students, that we become a part of them. And you'll find that down the road somewhere, they will remember what you did. They will remember. And um, I've been at BTBI now going on 19 years, and I just love it. I love it. 
um, and I, I, the, the persons I work with, you know, is mentioned that I'm presently enrolled with York St. John's University, where I'm trying to, to get my MBA. And um, it was so funny. I registered for this, this class two years ago. They made me at the hurricane, the pandemic. And I'd like to thank AVP Colley. She was she is an inspiration. Um, one of the main reasons why I'm, I'm actually registered and I'm actually doing this class. Um, but I saw that the way Miss Colley is in school studying. I need to get I need to, <laughs> I need to go in and, and, and enroll, which I already registered. And then when you look at it, you know, my mom was in college when I was in high school. And so here it is now. I'm doing the same thing. I have young kids, I have children. And so they're not, none of them are in school, in high school, but I have my, one well, of my daughters that's enrolled in BTBI. As a matter of fact, my wife is enrolled in BTBI in the business administration course. And here it is now, I'm in university doing the same thing my mom did. All right, and, and, I, and I thank God for those two ladies, ABP Colley and my mom. Dr. Lozier Roca. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's really um, encouraging. Um, teaching at BTBI is a lot of work, all right, especially in um, HOD. Um, it's a lot of work, a lot of responsibility. But I guarantee you one thing I'm going to do my job to please the Lord. And I do it to please the Lord, that means I can't do it any better, all right? Because you know, we can only do things as far as we can think. And so right now I'm broadening my horizon by doing my studies in leadership and management. Um, and because I'm doing it in leadership and management, I'm my, I, I realize that even some of my thinking has changed. Okay. And so I know when I graduate in, a, uh, in the next year, I, I, I told Ms. Cody, I'm not going to stop there. I'm just going to continue for my PhD. Um, because I, I'm going to continue because I, I know I can, I want, I, the more I get, the more I have to give. And so I want to be able to give. I want to be able to, to, to help our students and not just um, teaching them auto mechanics or, or, or teaching them um, mechanical engineering, but I want to continue to teach them life skills. And, and if I, at the age of 57, can enroll in school, um, they can see now that, hey, when Mr. Roke was 57, he was in school. I'm only in my 20s and 30s. I have no excuse. And so we have to let our life, we can let our life be a, a pattern for someone else. And that's, that's my goal, is that the life that I live speak for me. And, and I will continue to assist. I will continue to teach um, at BTBI. Um, I love technology. Uh, you'll find that at Roker's Auto, I have some of the most modern um, diagnostic equipment available in the market today. And BTBI is getting exact some of the more modern stuff than what I am, what I use. And I and my my job is to ensure that when those all the other students graduate, they wouldn't be they wouldn't enter at the bottom level. They're going to enter and be very competitive. I have students right now. But I found <laughs> some of my best diagnosticians for females. We have Tonya Cartwright is running her own garage right now in Edutra. All right, and she's doing extremely well. She specializes in air conditioning. All right, we communicate on a regular basis. If, if she runs into problems, I'm there to help her. We also have a young lady in Turks and Caicos. All right. She graduated. She went over there. She's working on the fire trucks. She's doing extremely well. We have a, another young lady here in Grand Bahama, Giovanna. She started in the field. Her husband is now her husband is in the field. So they're running a successful um, small garage. Um, I taught her at St. George's. I taught her at BTBI. I took her under my wing at Roker's Auto. So now she's able to take that experience 
and how the husband now have their own successful uh, independent garage. So Joe is also she enrolled in nursing as well, and so when it comes down to to diagnostic work, I found not that the men can't do it. The females have that touch, that special touch for that finished work. They're more detailed, and being a diagnostician, it calls for a lot of detail. Uh, you have to focus on because you have today's vehicle has more than 20 onboard computers. Those computers communicate what we call Bluetooth, on the vehicle they call it fly by wire, and they communicate back and forth. Um, on some vehicles, you have you have a high speed network. And so if you don't understand how those things work, you can be successful in fixing them. Because I'm a stickler for, I believe that if I understand how it work, I can fix it. Once you understand how something works, you can fix it. And so because the, the complexity of the vehicles today, um, you have, for instance, the electric vehicles now, I didn't go off to school to learn about the EVs. Uh, I did my research. I went to two-day seminars. And right now in Grand Bahama, I'm one of the only ones that work on EVs. All right. And because I, I did the research. And so I'm able to, to be able to understand how the system works. When you have a vehicle that has more than 40,000 volts, it can kill you. And so you must understand the do's and the don'ts. You must understand how I, I must let vehicle power, power down before I touch it, because I can electrocute myself. And so because I, I, I love to read, you'll find that I, I, I get all of this information and I, I pass it on to my students. All right. And they, they, they just love it. Right now I'm teaching a tech prep class and that tech prep class is really encouraging. All right, those students are so motivated and so excited to move on. We have a chat group and we communicate on a regular basis. They, 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 they I mean, they, uh, I think this is the, one of the best tech prep classes ever. All right, one of the best. All right, and um, I, I, I think BTBI is gonna produce some of the best technicians and not just in auto mechanics. When you look at the entire trades right across the board, you see, you have seen on, on Facebook, some of the products that's coming out of the carpentry lab there in, in your Providence with Mr. Glinton, uh, where he's assisting and building some Christmas ornaments out of wood. Um, I was showing them off um, the other day to a few persons and they were asking if they are for sale. They, they now want to purchase these things themselves for their homes. And so that's an avenue now we at BTBI can look at where we can make these things and sell them. All right. And so and, and you have also in the electrical installation department, we, 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 we're going to produce the best, right? Because as head of the department, if I allow my instructors to see my dedication and my motivation, it can only encourage them. And so they become more dedicated and motivated to work. And that's to say, I must set an example for them so that when they see me and what I produce, then they too can have that passion. You know, you gotta have that passion for it. Um, I don't want them to look at me as the boss. I'm not the boss, all right? My job is to ensure that, uh, that um, PTBI standards are uh, withheld. My job is to also look out for the instructors and not just be there with a belt on them. Um, it, it, I have to ensure that what they present is what PTBI um, program of study states. Um, and so that's what it's all about being a, a, a leader who, although the persons are a lot older than I am, they can look up to me knowing that I have their best interests at heart as long as they have the students' best interests at heart because the students are our clients and without our clients, we have no practice. And so we have to ensure that our clients are treated with the most respect. Our clients are afforded the opportunity 
uh, uh, the best opportunity. Um, it is said that BTBI is the best kept secret. It's not a secret anymore. All right, we we all here. We we're doing our best to ensure that our students receive the best instructional methods and tech and and the technology available to them. Uh, let me say something about the northern campus. Um, the northern campus is a small community, but um, we 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 are we are family. Um, and we we're still trying to recover from the hurricane. Um, and I'll give an example of the dedication of PTBI instructors. Let me use, for example, Mr. Moses Wilson, who is a welding instructor. You see, when your instructors see your dedication, it, it rubs off. But no, he, he didn't have any equipment. He brought his personal machines to use to ensure that those students in Grand Bahama did not lose any time in class. Um, the funny thing about it is he used Ms. Collie's vehicle to pull the machine to and from school to ensure that those students receive um, the, the instructions that they need. Um, and on top of that is when we have a, a board in place that's half us at half. And when they came and they saw that he was using his personal machine, I mean, his colleague's vehicle, they wanted to put a stop to that right away because it didn't look good on the institution. And so right away they jumped on it and told him they want to quote the machines that day. And I must say the day that the labs are outfitted with all brand new early machines, all brand new early machines. And just talking about Mr. Wilson, that's him calling me right now. <laughs> all right. All right. But um again, we, you know, we 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 do what we have to do to ensure that the institution maintains its integrity to ensure the institution's name stays intact. And that's what that's what we're all about. I just love it. Um, I'll be here until they tell me I can't be here anymore. Uh, that's the law secret for something else. But until then, I'll be at BTBI to ensure that I do my job to the best of my ability and um, be here to serve. And that's what we are, we are servants. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, Ms. Thompson. Wonderful. This is just so exciting, Mr. Roker. And I'm going to jump right in, jump right in here. I, I just want to say, I want to tip my hat to Dr. Lozier Roker, your mom. I've heard so much about her. And clearly you sounded as if you may have been a little disgusting person at some point, right? <laughs> so what advice then do you give to the mothers? Who may be tuned in and who's saying, oh boy, this this boy I have, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like just giving up. And then, you know, you always hear a woman can raise a son, you know, as if mothers can't have that type of hold. But from what I've heard about your mother, um, she wasn't playing with you. So nope. what advice, <laughs> what advice then do you give to the mothers, you know, who may find themselves in this predicament? This may sound hard, but first see the mother said need to set the example for the child. Um, I grew up in a godly home. My mom was the Sunday school superintendent at Southland Church of God on Soldier Road. We were living and we lived Derby Road, Yellow Valley Gardens. Sunday school starts at 9.45. And she would tell you, no one is going to open the church door for her. <laughs> <laughs> I could go and party on Friday night, Saturday night. But I tell you one thing, you could be the Sunday school before it starts, and guess what? One point we had no car, so we had to walk. And we can be the south line before the first bus reached, because she's going to open that door, and no one's going to open that door for her. All right, and sometimes we want to teach children by telling them what to do. Mom taught us by showing us how to do. All right, when 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 she wanted to, to, to accomplish something financially. During the summer, when I go by summer, mom had a stall on Bay Street. And guess what? We were right there. All right. You, you earn a living. You, you know, it's know? very, it's, I'm sorry for cutting you, but it's very interesting that you'd have said that because that was going to be my next question. And it was about leading by example. I remember walking around there um, to, the, to the lab uh, a few weeks ago. You were there. 
the mechanics lab, you know, I always called the wrong thing, the garage. And I looked around and you were the only one who was there. There you were cleaning the floor. And I was like, Mr. Roka, what are you doing? And you said, the floor has to be cleaned. How important is it for us? Many times we want to be in charge and we want to, you know, um, how important is it to lead by example? That same day when you came there, another instructor came by and saw me cleaning the floor. And he said the same thing. Next thing I know, a few other instructors came and I, I stopped cleaning the floor. They took over cleaning the floor. All right. So, you know, I don't have to go there and, and say, clean the floor. I can clean, I'll clean the floors. No one's there. But my instructors now are a place where if they see me cleaning the floor, they'll come and take the broom from me. You spoke about math. You spoke about how you hated math. And you know that that is the position <laughs> in which we find ourselves even now. There are a lot of students who will say, I ain't come here to do this. No, I came here to learn auto mechanics. I ain't come here to do no math. What do you say to those students? There's someone now who's listening, who's probably saying, I ain't going to be the VI boy because they ain't going to make me do math. What, what, what do you say? Mr. Ingram taught me something. He said, Roka, don't look at math as a subject. Look at math as a tool. Every trade needs math. Every trade. And so I look at math different. Okay, I don't look at it as a subject where I get frustrated. In auto mechanics, you have to know some math. All right. You got to be able to calculate the braking distance on a car. Okay. When you use a diagnostic computer, when a bunch of numbers show up in front of you, you don't understand, how can you fix it? Okay, that's why it, it, it's so important. You may decide, okay, I want to be a carpenter. How could you be a carpenter if you understand trick to pitch a roof? How can you read a measuring tape? All that is math. Okay, right down to sewing, you need math. <laughs> Every trade. Someone just asked whether Mr. Ingram is still teaching at BTVI. Still teaching. You said, what goes through your mind when you see Mr. Ingram? <laughs> Age. <laughs> <laughs> Remember now, I'm 57 years old. He taught me when I was in my 20s. <laughs> wow. Wow. Listen, got another question. Um, did you ever think? as a student coming in and getting your little $25 a week, right? Did you ever think that the day would come that you would be HOD? I never dreamt it. And the thing about it, you know, I did not apply for the position. Person saw my work. They saw the work and it was recommended that I be um, the HOD. And not just the HD for Freeport, but the HD for the entire Bahamas. Help us to understand this. By your own admission, you left a decent paying job to go make $150. What was the rationale? And especially now when all we want to do is make more and more and more. You know, what was the rationale? I wasn't looking at the money. I was following my heart and my passion. A lot of persons are in jobs and they're miserable. They're miserable. So why be somewhere and be miserable when you can go somewhere and be enjoy what you're doing? If you enjoy what you're doing, the money coming afterwards, you know. I was working for someone now, I have my own shop. I have employees. Okay. My business can run without me. Jim, you know, Jim Rowan said. And I, I love it. I read a lot of his books. You know, you do your part-time job until your part-time job is making more money than your full-time job. And that's what happened. You spoke about being inspired by your brother, uh, Thaddeus. And uh, you also spoke about sitting at the feet of Mr. Eiffel. How important is it for us to be prepared to sit at the feet of the master until, you know, everyone, don't let us come out with our little degree again. We won't be in charge. We won't listen to nobody. <laughs> how, how important is that? Very, very, but you, 
before you can be a leader, you have to be a student. And um, you have to humble yourself, especially if you know that person is better than you and they have something you want. And so I, 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 I sat under my brother, I sat under Clyde Eiffel, and um, so Eiffel taught me, you know, basically everything he knew, everything he knew. You know, he, he started calling me his son because I, I, I relied on him. And you know the thing he taught me? To buy my own tools. You know, that, how did he teach you that? He didn't teach me by telling me that, you know. I was doing a job and I wanted to use his 13 millimeter wrench. He said, that's $5. I said, he said, $5. I gave him the $5, I lost the nut, he took it back from me, time to tighten it, I need it again. He said, that's $5. I say, I say, but I just give you five, he said, you gave me five to lose it, now you gave me five to tighten it. He said, Ken, at the end of the day, he said, Ken, I ain't doing that for the money. I teach you, you need to go and purchase your own tools. Don't rely on anyone else. Have your own tools to work. He said, how can you come to work? And you don't have a tool to work. And from that day on, I have about four or five different 13 millimeter wrench. <laughs> you spoke about networking. At one point, you spoke about being a part of this global, um, this network, uh, over 60,000. What was it and how did ITC or BDVI help to put you in a position where you'd feel comfortable and, and as we say in our mission, to provide learning opportunities to enable individuals to be globally competitive. What was it about BTVI ITC that made you feel and know that you are indeed able to compete at a global level? My instructor, Vince Notes, very humble a man. You know, he taught me everything he knew, but I found that he was working for a company that only had a select type of vehicles. And so he was saying the same thing over and over. Um, not to look down at him, but there came, there came a day when he came to me. I also met Lincoln Continental that he, he just couldn't sort out. But he, he was so used to working on one brand that when he was faced after leaving the company, he's fixing another vehicle outside of the, what he usually see. He had difficulties. And so that's when I realized that, boy, I just can't focus on one area. I need to be able to go beyond this. So I, I started, I went online and I did some research looking for um, different uh, uh, um, websites with automotive repair. And then I saw the sign say IATN. And when I looked at it, it said International Auto Technicians Network. And it says, you click a free membership. And I read about the company. And when I realized how many persons, and they had a chat room there. So I logged into the chat. When I saw different countries, and this chat room was open 24 hours because of the time differences around the world. And so if I wanted to speak with Daniel Ari, I would get up 3 o'clock in the morning to catch him in the chat room because of the time difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's when I realized, hey, as a matter of fact, inside the classroom, inside all of my automotive classrooms, I log on to the laptop. I introduce IATN to the students. I had the students ask those technicians questions and they were able to get the answers right away. I was showing them the power of networking, being able to, 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 to communicate with persons from all around the world. So these resources are there. These resources are there. Now, BTBI has a, 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 a program or resource called EBSCOhost. Mm -hmm. EBSCOhost is an awesome library. Let me give an example how good it is. I can put my diagnostic computer on a car. And let's say it gave me a code PO301, which simply means misfire on cylinder number one. I would go into EBSCO host, pull up that vehicle, look for that code, and it gave me step by step repair instructions. And so it, a, a lot of persons don't, don't see how valuable that is. 
because I never did the research into it. I went deep into that. It has all the wiring diagrams for every car. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't understand where the wires go, you go to EBSCOs and print it out, go to the car and do your work. Question. Someone asked this question and they were giving away their age when they did. They wanted to know if you still go back to the VHS training tapes to look at them. And these young people, you, you know, that's a, a, an older person who asked that because these young people don't even know what VHS is. I don't have a VHS machine now. <laughs> and my my very last question to you, my very last question. There's a song that I love, the Bush Mechanic song, right? Why why don't just settle for being a bush mechanic? You know, you just find the women around and one like me, once my car stops, I just want to get started. And so they'll charge me thousands of dollars. And one day they'll tell me this wrong, that wrong, and that. Why tell the persons who are listening to you why it isn't good enough to just settle for being a bush mechanic? Why, why should they keep going back to school that you have done? You, you, you have yourself a new car with more than 20 onboard computers. You can carry the fella under the tree. Let me give an example. This happened last year, December. A lady, she had this, uh, this is a, a Nissan SUV. It went to a gentleman for alternative repair. She picked it up, half hour later, it was on fire. <laughs> All right. And so you find you, you gotta be very careful who you put your vehicle in the hands of. Okay. And so you wanna you wanna go to someone um, that has the right equipment. Like I was explaining to some of the students, I asked them what's the difference between a half inch wrench and a 13 millimeter. And they would tell you, but they're the same. They can be the same if one is standard and one is metric. Uh, people tend to interchange them, but they're not the same. It's a size difference. And so you're going to carry a car with this metric as someone who's standard. And it, it, you, you, know, you have a problem. I'm not saying that some, they don't know some of the things that they're doing, but when you're talking about being able to have the right equipment, there's a reason why they call them bush mechanic. You don't, you know, you don't want MacGyver working on your car. All right. And that's what, that's what happens. You have MacGyver who's going to try and make something work. Whereas is a reason why the, 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 the manufacturer put those parts there. You know, you fellas leaving screws out and tell you you don't need it. Okay. So you have to, let's say your car has a check engine light on. There's a reason why that's on. That's called a telltale light. That is telling you there's a problem. So you have to put on the computer, pull the codes and diagnose your problem. The day, nowadays you have cars that tell you when the tire has too much air or not enough air. Okay. And so you have to be able to program those things. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Roker. And now I would like to invite Mrs. Zendra Neely to come back with a thank you. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What an inspiring journey, Mr. Roker. You have encouraged us to reach higher heights. Thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule to share your expertise with us. You continue to touch our lives as BTVI has touched your life. And we are so grateful for this. Like you said, let your life speak for you. And BTVI remains strong and God bless. Thank you so much, Mr. Roker, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And finally, just before we leave, there are a few announcements that I'd like to share with you. First of all, as you already know, this is the final session for 2022, and we thank you for being such faithful attendees. Secondly, the hashtag road to 50 race 
is coming up this Saturday. That's December the 3rd. It is a national race. And yes, that means that it's going to be happening on every island of the Bahamas. So wherever you are under the sound of my voice, I know that there are many of you here who are in Grand Bahama. I know that we have some persons who are in Abaco who have signed on for sure. I saw some names I remember, but it doesn't matter where you are in the Bahamas, we would like for you to register and to participate. So the road to 50, there's a significance. The significance is that as a country, we will be celebrating our 50th year of independence in 2023. And this fun, run, walk, listen, if you want to cycle, you can cycle. If you want to skate, you can skate. If you want to run backwards, listen, you can do all of that. It's free. You will get a t-shirt. All you need to do, I'm not even sending you to the link to look to, to call me 502-6321 or 502-6323. We need to get you registered. Okay. I saw that Dr. Davis just signed on. And so Dr. Davis said to me, Thompson, we need to get our people registered. And so I'm inviting you, please reach out to me. I will ensure that you are registered to take part. We are expecting an exciting time and we would like to see all of you alums, faculty, staff, friends of BTBI. We want to see you join us as we walk, run, jump. We are also going to be there in fine form as our massage therapists, our students in the massage therapy program will be out in goodly numbers, as my rev would say. And so please come on down, come on and let's show that we are BTVI strong. On Monday, December the 5th, a general will pay his annual visit to the Sandler's Rehabilitation Center. What is so significant is that this year, BTVI has partnered in a major way and we have created life-sized ornaments. You would have heard Mr. Roca mention Mr. Neon Glinton. He is our carpentry instructor. He has taken the lead on this initiative. If you visit our Facebook pages and our other media platform, social media platforms, you will see the pictures of the reindeers. You will see the Christmas trees, the candy canes. Well, all of those will be erected on the premises of Sanderlands Rehabilitation Center just in time for the Governor General's annual visit. So BTVI will be featuring prominently. There is still some time if you wish to volunteer. We still need to have a little bit of painting that needs to be done. And of course, we need to erect those down at Sandlin's Rehabilitation Center. So if you'd like to volunteer, please give me a call again at 502-6321 or 502-6323. On Saturday, December the 10th, at 7 p.m. at the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas, we will have our Gala Awards Ceremony, where we will be recognizing the 2022 Distinguished Alumni. Mr. Roker was recognized last year, so Mr. Roker is a 2021 Distinguished Alumni. And that is a designation that is held by only 23 people so far. So if you're interested, tickets are priced at $75. And we're asking you again to contact us at the Office of Fund Development at 502-6321 or 3 for more information. That brings us to the end of our program, our session. And as always, we welcome your comments and suggestions on ways in which we can make these sessions more engaging, especially as we approach 2023. So I'd like to take this time on behalf of our interim president, our executives, our faculty, staff, employees of the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. See you in 2023. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.